Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at this Anytone ATD878UV that I just picked up from Bridgecom. So I've been licensed since 1992 and I haven't done anything with digital modes yet so I figured it was about time to change that. So having said that, I actually do own a Yaesu FT3200 which is capable of C4 FM, but there really aren't any 2 meter Yaesu digital repeaters here in Connecticut where I live, at least not ones that I can hit on a regular basis. Now we do have a pretty decent D-Star infrastructure here in Connecticut, and I almost went that route, I was going to buy the Kenwood HT, but then I started talking with a couple of the guys that I pal around with on the repeaters, and they all have DMR radios, so I figured I would go that route first, and then maybe jump into D-Star later if I like the digital mode. <laughs> so right now, as of September of 2019, the Anytone 878 is probably the, the hottest DMR radio out there, at least from all the reviews I've read and one of the local guys here has one and he's already built a code plug so that'll save me some time getting up and running with it so anyway I'm gonna pull it out of the box we'll see what's in there and take it from there one more thing I want to mention about the radio before I get started with the video is that I did buy it from Bridgecom but this video is not sponsored by Bridgecom or any tone nobody contacted me and asked me to do a review of the radio this is something that I wanted to play with on my own and decided I would make a video and kind of share my experience with you guys as it kind of unfolded so here you go All right, so I'm going to pull the radio off, and since this thing is already kind of on there screwed up, I'm going to pull that off before I do anything else. Okay, so here's the battery. It looks like it just clips in from the bottom and clicks into place at the top. So now I'll screw the rubber dummy load up on top here. <laughs> so I just noticed inside the bag for the belt clip, there's a couple of little tiny screws, so I want to be careful I don't lose those. And those are Phillips heads, so I'm going to need to go get a screwdriver. So I just noticed there was a little sticker under here. Uh, if you guys can see it says owner on there so so you can write your name or your call sign and stick it on the inside of the belt clip there in case anybody ever steals it if they don't think to look in there then you can identify it as your radio i suppose okay so now i'm going to attempt to put the belt clip on without losing the screws this is a little tricky because you got to kind of press down and this is not the right size screwdriver so i'm going to go get a better one let's give this thing a try and see if it'll power on all right it's got some charge to it so I guess I can play with it for a little while before I have to charge it. Okay, looks like the radio is on and booted up. So now I've got some learning to do. I've only had this radio about a week, so we'll just take a quick first look at the radio's overall kind of form and function here. And then I'll do a quick demo just so you can see kind of how it works. So taking a look at the front panel of the radio, you can see we have some navigation buttons on top. This here is the speaker and microphone area and then down here is the keypad so the overall feel and operation of these buttons is pretty good everything seems like it fits well it's nice and tight there's good tactile feedback and whatnot in here so you don't have to worry about things being sloppy on the side we have the push to talk button and a couple of programmable buttons here so these buttons down here along with the navigation buttons on the front are programmable in the software so you can have them do different things and I believe they also all have a short press function and a long press function that can be independently configured to whatever you want I believe this one up here this little blue button is also programmable so as you can see the screen is pretty readable here I've got sort of the default setting and the brightness is kind of turned down a little bit and it is kind of sunny out here so it's a little hard to see it also kind of has a bit of a glare on it so as I move it around it kind of washes out so the brightness and I believe the background color and font color can all be configured in the software you can change that based on what your preferences are over on the side there is a rubber door 
to hide the speaker mic inputs. This is also where you put the programming cable to connect this up to a PC. And this seems to fit nice and tight in the side. I'm not sure if this radio is water resistant or waterproof to any degree, but it does have a nice tight seal. So up on top we have the kind of channel selector and the power and volume control. I think these are also programmable to some extent. Now of course I'm just using the supplied antenna that came with the radio. So you can replace the antenna with an aftermarket unit that would presumably be a little bit better as long as it fits this female SMA connector. And then of course on the back we have a belt clip. This has got a fairly good strong spring on it so it should clip to your belt and stay there or whatever you want to clip it to. And then of course this is the battery that can be popped off if needed. So to get the battery off there's just a slide clip up here that you push up and then the battery just kind of tilts out and comes out. You can see that the inside is all sort of made of cast metal. I presume that's some sort of aluminum. So I think the battery weighs about as much as the radio itself here. It is a good unit and it seems to be lasting quite a while on this radio. Okay so I'm not going to go through how to create a code plug or anything like that in this video. So I was able to go to the Bridgecom website and download a code plug that somebody else has already created and get it loaded into the radio. They've got a nice database set up on their website that users can upload code plugs to. So I found one for Connecticut. Actually there was only one there but it was created by one of the guys I talked to on the local repeater. Uh, so I kind of knew a little bit about it already, but I was able to bring that down and put it into my radio. I made a few minor changes, but uh, for the most part I left it as he has it. Let's give it a shot and see what we can do with it. So let's test the radio on a traditional FM analog repeater. Uh, a couple of the guys I usually talk to are on the local repeater right now. Okay, so I'm connected up to my external 2 meter antenna that I normally use. Now, I will mention that I live in kind of a tough spot, at least for this repeater. There's kind of a ridge line between me and that repeater, so it's a little tough to get over the hill. It's going to sound a little bit scratchy, uh, but that's just my location relative to the repeater and the antenna height and everything that I have here. N1NUG. Yeah, how am I making it into the repeater now? Am I getting in there okay? I can hear it now. Yeah, you're getting into it. Not real loud, not real strong. Uh, but I don't think you feel very well, so that might be the reason for that. No, it's probably partly that and partly just my location. Uh, you know, I need a little more power than an HT usually puts out to get into the repeater sometimes. It's so actually, I was wondering if you'd mind going over to Simplex with me. And we'll just do one more test over on Simplex here to check the radio out. Are you kidding? <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> uh, you pick it. 5-5, five, five, right? Or if you want to go somewhere else? 5-5 five, five is perfect. I, I think I've got that programmed in. So I'm over on Simplex now. Uh, we'll see if we can get John over here now. <laughs> we shouldn't have any trouble. He's only a couple of miles away. Okay, Rob, I'm on the lowest power I can go. Anyway, I'll copy, Rob. K, uh, yeah, N1NUG, KB1OYB. KB1OYB, N1NUG. Sound good over here. Just a tiny bit of white noise on the signal. So no problem there. 100% copyable. But uh, listen, I won't hold you here. I'll let you get back to the repeater. Maybe I'll jump back on on the big radio in a little bit. Okay, you go ahead. 7-3 for now. Thanks for testing things out. N1 and UG. 7-3, Rob. KB1 OYB QSY back to 110. Okay, so there you have it. Quick FM test both through a local repeater and a simplex contact here. Now, let's go over and try and make a digital contact. This is N1 and UG. November 1, November Uniform Golf. Listening on North America. N1 N U G. This is K1 X R N coming back to you. K1 X R N N1 N U G. Good morning. Name here is Rob Romeo Oscar Bravo, and I am in Connecticut just testing out this uh, radio I just picked up. I'm new to DMR. Okay, Rob. Yeah, nice to meet you. Um, good morning. I'm on my way into work. I gotta work a few hours today, and uh, then I'll be done hopefully before noon and enjoy the nice weather. We're up in New England, in Massachusetts. Uh, I'm guessing you're from New England too, if you got the one call sign. And our uh, name here is Rich, Romeo India Charlie Hotel. And um, I'm coming to you from the Bourne uh, repeater, the two meter repeater. I'm not new to DMR, but I don't talk on it much. 
I, uh, I think I picked it up about a year and a half ago. Back to you. N1NUG from K1X Merrin. Okay, very good, Rich. Yeah, too bad you got to work today. It is a beautiful day out here. Uh, hopefully you can uh, make it quick and get out here and enjoy it. Yeah, I'm in Connecticut, not too far from you, uh, in northeastern Connecticut. The repeater I'm uh, coming through right now is at the University of Connecticut in stores. This is probably only my second DMR contact here, so just kind of experimenting and learning about you know what this, this mode is all about. But uh, yeah, and one in UG from K1X, all right, I'll probably do one more go around uh, as I approach, uh, I work in New Bedford into Wheeling City, so it gets, it gets kind of uh, choppy, I know, when I get in there with most other repeaters. I'm going to run along myself. The wife's calling me in to uh, get some chores done here before uh, before the day gets going. So, 7-3, thanks for coming back to me and checking the radio out and whatnot. 7-3 for now, N1NUG. Yeah, enjoy the nice weather and a little bit of the last bit of summer we got. And I will catch you again, hopefully, um, N1NUG from K1XRN, clear. So I had a good CUSO with K1XRN up there towards Cape Cod. Uh, not too far away from here, only a couple hundred miles, uh, but we were able to connect on the North America Talk Group and kind of have a short CUSO there. So I apologize here for the shaky cell phone footage, but I really can't get the parrot mode to work on the DMR mark system for some reason. Not sure if I've got something programmed in wrong, or something's going on with the repeaters. I did talk with one of the local hams here who's tried it and said he has trouble with it on the Mark system as well. So we do have repeaters linked here to the Brandmeister system, but can't hit those from my house because of my location, the terrain, and my current antenna situation. So I've got the Brandmeister repeater programmed in here. I've got the parrot mode ready to go, and we'll do a quick test here while I'm at work and in range of that Brandmeister system. This is N1NUG testing on parrot mode. This is N1NUG testing on parrot mode. So there you go. That's what the parrot mode sounds like on the Brandmeister system. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier in the video, I really can't get uh, the Brandmeister system from my house. The ridge lines just kind of block the repeaters. But I'm out here on a bike trail in a neighboring town, and the repeater is actually up on that hill next to me. So I shouldn't have any trouble getting it. In fact, I'm here on low power. I've got the repeater set to the TAC 310 talk group, and I'm gonna try and bring someone up here if I can. We'll see what happens. This is N1 NUG, November 1, November Uniform Golf, listening. Okay, so I'm back at the trailhead for the bike trail, and I'm obviously sitting in my Tahoe here. I'm gonna try one more time on the radio, see if I can bring somebody up on one of the Brandmeister talk groups. I think this one is TAC 310. We'll give it a shot. This is N1 NUG, November 1, November Uniform Golf Testing. KB3YVV, you are loud and clear, sir. KB3YYV, I think you said it was. This is N1 NUG. Name is Rob, Romeo Oscar Bravo, and I'm in Connecticut. Thanks for coming back to my call. Good to meet you, Rob. Uh, KB3YVV, Keeler Bravo 3, Yankee Victor Victor. My name is Julius. Good to meet you, sir. I am in North Royalton, Ohio, sir. I am in uh, Cle near Cleveland. KB3YVV. Okay, very good. I just uh, finished up a bike ride here out on a bike trail in Vernon, Connecticut. And I uh, gotta go pick up the family. But wanted to take a quick check on this radio here. I just got it the other day and uh, kind of new to DMR, so just trying it out and seeing what it's all about. I just got started myself in DMR. Uh, what kind of radio did you get? This is the Anytone uh, 878, and I picked it up from uh, Bridgecom. I hear it's a good radio. I got the, uh, I picked up the B-Tech uh, 6X2. Um, it's supposed to be very similar. Oh, okay, yeah, I think one of the guys in my radio club has that radio, and we were kind of comparing and contrasting the other night, and I think they're uh, they're pretty close to being the same thing from from what we could tell anyway. That's uh, that's what I found out uh, from the reading that I did that they, they appear like almost like clones. I'm going to uh, I'm going to say seven three. I got to uh, hit the road here and pick up my family at the other end of the bike trail. But seven three for now. Thanks for coming back to me. Uh, good luck and enjoy DMR. Maybe we'll catch you on here again soon. Uh, seven three N one N U G. 
and one in UG. This is KB3YVV. You have a great day, and uh, it's nice talking to you. Okay, so there you go. Looks like we got a successful test on Brandmeister here too, out on the bike trail. But it's kind of hot out here. You may be able to tell I'm sweating, so I gotta go pick up the family on the other side of the trail now. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the Anytone ATD 878UV. Uh, some final thoughts. For me, I think this is a great radio. So I get a traditional analog FM HT that I can use to hit repeaters or do simplex at a ham fest or some other type of event. Uh, but I also get the DMR capability if I want to play with that some more or need it when I'm out in an area where I can use DMR. Or if I decide to get a hotspot for the shack or something like that, I can definitely use the DMR that way and not have to worry about trying to hit a repeater from here. So another feature the radio has that I didn't touch on in the video at all is APRS capability. I do want to play with that, but I'll do that in another video. So my final thoughts on the HT are that it's a pretty good value for the money. It's got a fair number of features and it seems to work pretty well. For me, being sort of an occasional HT user, I think it's going to fit my operating style just fine. So if your operating style is similar to mine or you're just getting into amateur radio or DMR or something like that, then this may be a radio that you want to consider. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Now I'll also mention that this video was not sponsored by Bridgecom. I bought this radio with my own money, but I will leave a link to their product page in the description below if you want to check out what they have to offer. So having said all that, thanks for watching.